Cancer in women is rising six times faster than in men due to unhealthy lifestyles. Data published by Cancer Research UK shows that although factors such as obesity, drinking and smoking are contributing to a rise in cancer cases among both sexes, women are bearing the brunt of the increase. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined from Edinburgh by Dr Peter Rice, Chair of Scottish Health Action on Alcohol Problems, and Kate Smirthwaite, a feminist and comedian. Welcome to you both. Um, if I turn to you first, uh, Dr Peter Rice, um, are you surprised by these latest statistics? No, I think we've known for some time that many of the key risk factors for, for cancers in, in women, um, tobacco and, and alcohol use, have uh, been, not been falling as fast as they've been falling in men. Um, so it's not completely surprising. Cancer, of course, is also a, a thing that occurs with, with ageing. And as the population gets older, we know that rates of cancer will increase. So putting those two things together, no, these figures are not a surprise. And what exactly is the reason for it? Well, I think, uh, to deal briefly with tobacco before we move on to alcohol, the, the rates of smoking in women have, have not fallen as quickly as they have in men, and that's really continued work that, that needs to go on. I think with alcohol, while men continue to drink more than women do and experience more health problems than women, again, the... the I feel like the total share of our alcohol consumption that women are drinking ha has increased somewhat. So women's drinking has been on a, a, a more of an upward trend than men's drinking has, and that contributes to various cancers, including breast cancer in, in women. Kate, it's lifestyle that's responsible for this, this increase. I mean, how, how does that make you feel? Well, kind of not surprised, really. If you look at what is going on out there, from, uh, from Trump to Brexit, you know, uh, the pay gap's not getting smaller, the domestic violence rate isn't falling, the rape conviction rate isn't going up. Frankly, once I've been through that, I could do with a gin and tonic. Um, I'm pretty much not surprised uh, to hear that women are drinking more. And we should also remember that, historically, a lot of the reasons why women were drinking less was because they, they didn't have so much money, they were trapped in their home, and because, culturally, women didn't feel able to go out to bars and whatever, you know, it was... It was was not seen as a safe or sensible thing for women to do. So when we say women are getting more health problems related to alcohol, we should be aware that they also have the freedom to go and drink alcohol when perhaps they didn't so much. It's like saying there's very few hang gliding injuries in prison. Well, that's not a reason to put everybody in prison so they won't have hang gliding injuries. It's a reason to make sure um, that people are aware of the dangers and they know what choices they're making. But we should also bear in mind, um, you know, as, as the other guest said, that, uh, that men still get 16% uh, more cancer than women. And and in fact, men die 40% more often from cancer than women do in the UK. So although, although women are catching up faster, um, you know, it's actually, it's actually sort of sexist almost to talk about cancer as being a women's issue because it's actually, looking at the numbers, it's a men's issue. And, and we know there's various issues going there. And one really big one is the not going to the doctor's business. Guys sat on the sofa, they know there's a lump where they don't think there ought to be a lump. Um, and rather than showing it to their friendly family doctor, uh, they sit there and scratch it and have another beer and try to pretend it doesn't exist. Exist. And I think there's a really important message for everybody, really, that is, if, you, if you're worried about anything, um, make sure you get some attention on, on the issue. Uh, Dr Peter Rice, are we talking about cancers that are peculiar to women, cancers that are specific to women, i.e. breast cancer, ovarian cancer? Is that the area, or is it cancer across the board? Well, it's, it's, it's both. It's cancer across the board, uh, but breast cancer is a very common cancer in women. It's often it's identified much better than it used to be, it's treated better than it used to be, the survival rates are much better than it used to be, but um, that is a, a, a cancer where we know alcohol consumption really starting from any level increases your, 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 your risk of breast cancer amongst many other factors. Um, but so yes, it's cancers across the board that, that affect both, both genders, uh, liver cancer, bowel cancer, uh, cancer of the mouth, cancer of the throat. But breast cancer, I think the recognition of the association is a relatively new finding. Maybe the last 10 years or so, really, our awareness of that's been increasing. So that, if you like, is, has been the new bit of information that I think women need to take on board. That if they're looking to reduce their cancer risk, in particular breast cancer risk, paying attention to their alcohol consumption should be part of that. And Kate, what would your advice be to uh, young women, uh, women of any age? Would it be to not drink uh, and not smoke? Or, or do you think that is patronising, as you were sort of alluding to a little bit earlier? 
No, I, I, I think that the, what we can't do is kind of just tell people, well, you shouldn't do this. You know, when, with, when it comes to smoking, we all know that telling people not to smoke it has some impact, um, but what's much more significant is things like, um, you know, banning smoking in indoor spaces, all this kind of stuff. And I think, actually, we could be looking at some of the same measures when it comes to Britain's obesity crisis for men and women. You know, um, I, personally, I love to play sport, and a lot of the time I can't because it's so expensive, you know, um, gym memberships, joining a sports club. There's a real lack of funding, um, especially for women's sports a lot of the time. I think there's a lot a that we you could do. You can go and run outside, you know, Kate. You can run outside. Oh. That's great. That, that's, a, that's a wonderful suggestion. If you'd like to come round my area and stop <laughs> dozens of men from whistling at me, harassing me, bothering me, trying to block my path and get in my way, I would love to go running. But, but it, it's really a very unpleasant experience, actually. And I'm, I'm glad some women have found a space they can do it in, and, and good luck to them, whatever. But I, no, I gave up running years ago because I just couldn't. And I'm not the sort of person who can just jog past and not respond. So all that happened was I ended up in a large number of possibly quite good, you know, calorie-burning arguments uh, with men outside building sites and cafes. So it's, there's just an attitude out there that needs to be challenged about women taking part in sport. And when I travel up and down the country doing comedy, so often I'm at the motorway services and I see big groups of guys come in with their matching shirts and they're obviously off on the road um, playing sport of some kind. And I think, you know, it would be great if I saw more groups of women doing the same thing, you know, for, for social reasons, for bonding reasons, for fun reasons, but also because it's okay. so great for your health okay, to be I, a part of that. I think we need to get you some good noise reduction there, headphones so you can go out jogging. <laughs> um, Dr. Peter Rice. Thank you very much. We all should be a lot healthier. Kate Smurthwaite, thanks for your contribution.